Hey guys, I'm Joe Klimczewski, back with Adam Atkinson, and we are in Contest Prep University. Today, we're going to talk about some of the peaking variables, specifically what I consider to be the sledgehammers of peaking, which are carbs and water. Uh, we finished last time, Adam, with you saying, you know, it was revolutionary back when I kind of resisted the, the only conventional way of peaking, which was a backload. I started front-loading but we left water in. That might have been the very first thing I did to kind of buck the system. And, and it was revolutionary in the fact that people were just coming into the show hydrated, meaning muscle tissue was fuller. So you came along kind of after that and, and you accepted that as the normal thing to do now. You're going you're gonna to work with clients that way. What has been the main difference in just keeping people hydrated? And then we'll, we'll talk about carbs a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're storing water in the muscle tissue, they're going to be fuller. And I always call this as being able to see my work because I could give somebody all the carbs in the world. And if they're not drinking enough water, I'm not going to see what we're doing from our card load perspective because that glycogen's just not storing any water in the muscle tissue. It's more so going to, you know, go to your organs and everything else just to keep your body purely functioning, um, keeping digestion going. Um, your body cares more about survival than it does how it's going to look on contest day. So, yeah. so if, if you guys are still, I mean, you may be one of the only people on the planet who still withholds water. You start, you start withholding water maybe Thursday, drink hardly any Friday, almost none on Saturday stop it. Um, your muscle tissue is almost 75% water and you will never be full. Matter of fact, when your muscle tissue is hydrated, that's what fills out the muscle tissue. So you create the separations. Those, those fascial sheaths now have something to constrain because you're pushing, you know, the hydrated muscle tissue out there. So you know, even things like little feather striations and those little fasciculating fibers that you see when you're that lean, if you're not hydrated, that stuff is just not even visible. So we, we also, though, Adam, need to have, have carbs because carbs hold three times their weight in water. So you got to have enough carbs in there. And we talked last time about the progressive linear load or a front load where mm -hmm. carbs are higher. So explain your interplay. What are you looking at as a coach between carbs and water as you, as you get into those last couple of days? Yeah, so I would expect, my clients send me photos three times a day. So morning, midday, night, and I'll kind of describe what um, I would normally see with most people. And in the morning, I usually see they're at their tightest. Um, they've had zero food, so there's no room for spillover but also they're very flat because they've had no water whatsoever. Um, midday is usually that fine-tuned balance of, uh, you know, probably a good show day um, appearance, to be quite honest. They've had some food. They've had probably half of their water for the day. And then you get to the night photo where somebody is going to have all their food in, all their water in. Um, they're usually a little fuller, not as tight as they were in the morning. But that's to be expected. And then this is where we decide, do we need more carbs? Um, sometimes if vascularity is hiding, I might ask them, what's the temperature in your room like? Is it cold? Um, because if we're raising carbs, we might need to increase that water just to get that intracellular hydration and then allow me to see what I want to see as a coach. So vascularity can be a very good um, direction in if somebody is having enough water or not. Yeah, and interestingly, I mean, you can be super, super flat and, you know, almost no glycogen in your body and still be incredibly vascular because you're, there's no spillover. So you've got to bring those carbs up to the point where the muscle tissue is fuller. And then if you are seeing vascularity, that's not necessarily the goal, but it's a really good indication that at least you're not spilling over and, and you're approaching that line. So you know, next time uh, we get together, we're going to talk about how even the minerals, things like, like sodium and potassium, play into that. So we will see you guys next time in uh, Contest Prep University.